why are you able to come forward? Okay, who I said, who gave you the green light? Okay, <clears throat> I can't answer that. All I can say is that the easiest way for me to say what I'm saying is my association with three Nordic people in Douglas on the Apollo program, okay? I work with these guys, two young ladies and two really good looking Nordic guy. All right. And <clears throat> so working with the three of them for three and a half years on the Apollo program, uh, who all three denied that they were Nordics. But everybody that was anybody in engineering knew they were, okay? <clears throat> I never said they were. They never said they were. But <clears throat> if, you, if you can just try to visualize, um, I had 170 top engineers on the Apollo program working for me. Okay, I was engineering section chief at Douglas. Uh, I had, I guess, worked my way up. Uh, I come up with approaches and concepts and I get these implemented by all my designers. Yes. Uh, where did my, where did some of my ideas come from? I have this very nice looking young lady who never stops uh, kidding. She, it's fun to go to work. Mm -hmm. She never stops kidding. She's always sticking it in and turning it. And not just that, but she's always stuffing things in my head. Mm -hmm. So like when I presented this complete redesign of the Apollo program to Dr. Von Braun and Dr. Debus at Redstone Arsenal, one of the most classified facilities on the planet. Yeah. I had a <laughs> six foot by six foot model in a great big box put on the DC-7 to fly down to the Redstone Arsenal, okay? Yes. I rented a truck there weren't inside or closed trucks available. The only one that they had, had just board sides on it. So here is this great big gray box that could be a nuclear bomb. I drive this thing and I've never driven this, the I gears on this in my life. I'm in a three piece business suit. I'm driving this truck with this bomb box And you in the just back. drive it onto the base or something, and right? And I, wait just a second. <laughs> I get, now, my secretary had told me before I left, I've typed you an authorization as an exit, as a uh, uh, allowance to go on board the base, okay? Um, you're never gonna use it. Okay, I said you're gonna you're 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 gonna get on base and you're not gonna have anybody bother you. Okay, so yes, I'm driving this truck a long straight road to get to the gates of the base. And she said, I told you before, Billy, telepathically, I'm driving the truck. I just keep going. So the <laughs> gates open. Okay. So great. Now, off on the right hand. Wait, wait a minute. Great movie. Yeah. Okay. Off on the right hand side yeah. is this massive parking area for all of these trucks, all of the people to get on base, go through the security checks. Nobody. It's one of the most classified bases on the planet. Sure. And the doors open. The gate opens, and none of the four police guards at the office. They didn't pick up their rifles and come out and start shooting. Nobody did. The rifles just stayed by the front door where okay, they stood. Okay, but is this Nordic mind control? Yes. Is it? 
Yes. Okay. So, so even, are, what are you telling me? You're here because of Nordic mind control today. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> you know, is that what's happening? I mean, are these you know top admirals who've been in this game now since '42 at least? Are they letting you come here because they've been persuaded? to do so, or because they've been mind controlled by Nordics to let you come? Okay. Uh, I have to say, really, I don't know. Uh, and <laughs> I really don't know. I love that. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. That's okay. awesome. I would say that that's probably how you got, actually, I didn't just mean here disclosing, but actually here talking to me, because I'm usually the most dangerous woman <laughs> out there. I mean, to tell you the truth, that's my reputation. So somebody letting you talk to me. I mean, I know the Nordics are cool with me. So now I know why you're here, because... Well, you just answered it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> while we're still awesome. not believing the gates to open, I drive this truck through uh, a massive base that's covered with trees. You can't see the sky. Okay, you can't see where this tall building is that Von Braun's tower is. Right. I finally get to this. I drive right up. There's three levels of steps going up if you uh, come as a guest. But you can go into the back and drive in the back and get in there. So tell me why, you tell me why, four security guards come down the steps carrying a big rectangular dolly with four wheels. <laughs> okay? Yeah. They, I haven't said anything to them. They come over to the truck. Right. I'm out of the truck. They take the boards off the side, lay them down on the concrete. Uh, they pick up this model and they put it on this dolly. Why was that dolly available? Sure. I'm asking. Nordic mind control again. Okay, so they carry this big box with the model in it, the command center for launch of Apollo, which nobody in NASA knows even exists. Because remember, that, that's, that's my concept of what you've watched on TV every time you watch an Apollo mission. That great big facility. Well, we got Where, a lot but, of questions. Yeah, about but that. but just a, yeah. just a second. Our contract on the S4B stage of the Apollo, the command stage section, okay, right, requires us to utilize a open hangar with both doors on both ends of it. Uh, to check out our facility, our stage, and then assemble it on top of a outside uh, assembly area, okay? This is insane because we've got the most advanced circuits that have ever been designed for the computerized, the entire computerized operation of Apollo because remember Germany was all mechanical. They were not they did not use computers. Even back in those days. Back in those days. Now, this facility then uh, has this massive uh, outside structure where you assemble your stages on this, and it's 270 foot high, okay, out in the open, and then somebody lights the engine and we get the engines to operate and it lifts off. The checkout is of everything is outside. The checkout of the facilities and every part of the whole program is out in an environment with the doors open in a hangar. Okay, are you trying to tell me that because that it, it was somehow camouflaged and and so people wouldn't look or couldn't see it or no I'm saying that our 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 contract required us to do all of the assembly and checkout of our stage which is the controlling stage of Apollo in an open hangar in the worst atmosphere that we can do it on the planet because the, hu the humidity at this location 
So uh, why is, was it um, like that? I mean, this is was yours. Are you saying you made a redesign from that, or I that said I said to Dr. Debus and Dr. Von Braun in my briefing that I don't want to check. I don't want that hanger that you want me to check my stage in. I want. Well, first of all, you guys with the V2s in Germany, uh, roughly 70, 68 percent of the time when you check it out and then you lift it, there's problems with your own V2s. Yeah. So I'm going to check out my vehicle, first of all, in an inside closed area in the vertical position. And I'm going to keep it in a vertical position till I pick it up and put it on top of the lower stages. Okay, but I want to know why if, if the Nordics had this amazing technology and they were helping you and feeding you ideas for Apollo, why was Apollo so rudimentary? Uh, Is there a completely other Apollo that we never saw? Because we know that things happened on the moon once they got there and you said, you know, and I want to talk about all that. But you know what I'm saying? In other words, you're still talking about this module that has, you know, is a, basically a rocket. You know, it's like a tin can. No. Um, that's, that's old technology. Why did they let the humans continue with that, uh, that kind of a, a, a design? Uh, they, they could do what you would say would be uh, uh, a partial assistance to a country, and maybe we say they used the United States, okay? Now, uh, the Germans had been playing with rockets, liquid rockets, for uh, way before World War II, and World War War, even World War I, okay? <clears throat> so they have their command center, uh, the launch center, underneath the ground with concrete above it in a silo, an underground launch silo with a periscope up on top. They can look through. I said, we're not going to do that. I not only want my vehicle checked out in the vertical position and assembled that way, but I'm not going to use your underground launch facility for my cabinets full of support checkout and launch equipment. I want a uh, facility which will be a closed facility to assemble all of the stage and check them out. Okay? So my proposal to Debus and Dr. Von Braun was build a vertical assembly building people, okay? Oh yes, it will be the biggest facility space-wise of any building on the planet. Who cares? This is what we need. I got from checking out the German V2s in Germany in a horizontal to a vertical and then encased in a white room. And actually, my proposal was a white room as atmosphere, right? Air conditioned atmosphere, mm -hmm. because we were playing with advanced circuits and rocketry and and uh, uh, communication systems that nobody had, had ever done. So the chance for uh, something to go wrong was astronomical. And what I presented to Debus and von Braun was not just buildings. To, completely changed the whole checkout and launch at the Cape for production launches to the moon, okay? So if you'll remember in that book uh, selected uh, by extraterrestrials, there's a, there's a, a drawing in there yes. that shows Cape Kennedy, uh, Complex 39, and then a whole bunch of complexes all the way down this side mm -hmm. for uh, launch complex 39s and then circles down here for these massive truck facilities 
to haul up all the equipment to build a 10,000 man naval base on the moon underground. Okay, yes, but did this get built the way you wanted it to? It finally did, yes. Really? The facility got built exactly the way uh, the, the four major changes to the Apollo program came out of 170 guys in a engineering area called uh, Launch Complex 39, which we designed at Douglas, okay? Okay, but you're still not, you didn't answer my question about the technology. So you're basically saying, because this is interesting, you're saying that the Nordics have some limitations in the way they help, in the way they interfere with planet Earth. Is that what you're kind of getting at? Okay, you're getting complicated, your questions, but we have to step way back. <clears throat> uh, again, not really understood by the public, okay? <clears throat> yes, there are Federation facilities out in the galaxy where other extraterrestrials get together and uh, there's many different missions for many different types of programs. But we'll talk about one of them which cruises the galaxy and it has as many as 30 different extraterrestrial civilization people on board. It looks like the moon, okay? Uh, but it's a planet. I, I mean, it's not a planet, it's a vehicle. Right. Okay. So this cruises the galaxy. Is it a Dyson sphere or not? The what? Is it called a Dyson sphere? Uh, that's one term, but actually, uh, we're getting more complicated. <laughs> I can, uh, to, no, I need to answer your question. Um, these groups of extraterrestrials who work together but are at war with other extraterrestrials, okay, mm -hmm. have these vehicles that look like a planet, right. like our moon is a vehicle. It's a command center for this arm. Uh, the easiest way to look at this is to put your arm out like this and you be the center of the galaxy all the way out to here. There's four arms, arms on our galaxy. One of those arms has a place here which is called planet Earth. You're not downtown where all the action is in the galaxy. You're out here. You're in the area which galaxies, as they rotate, throw off. Okay? So you're sitting here on the tip, near the tip of the Milky Way galaxy. You, Earth. Okay? And what you need to do is visualize you're not, you are not Earth people. Okay? You are extraterrestrials, nice guys out there. Mm -hmm. So you know that this little planet is going to get thrown off. Maybe it take a couple of weeks yet, but eventually it's going to get thrown off. Um, so, so that's why this is happening. This is why this is happening. Okay. okay? And 2,000 years from now, we'll probably be picked up with another galaxy. We're just floating out there. <clears throat> And this goes back to uh, the problem that we had before about the number of years that you can live. We'll talk about that later. But back to these command centers which operate throughout the galaxy to monitor bad guys and attempt to get them to back off. Uh, so isn't Phobos one of them? Uh, yes. Okay. And so uh, essentially, we have nice guys in there and even some bad people in the same vehicle. And they discuss wars and disagreements and this sort of thing. But back in their own planetary part of the galaxy, they may be at war with two of the same guys that are in this together. So this is like a center right. of information uh, sort of like a group of people 
who are trying to get along for certain specifications or certain events. <clears throat> Those guys uh, control your planet, because, I mean your moon, because your moon is a command center for this region of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Not just the solar system, that's, that's small potatoes. Okay, the thing that's sitting right in here, which is you call your moon, okay, is a massive control center for this whole part of oh, the Milky Way galaxy. Okay, wow. Wow, wow is right. Well, what about Saturn? I thought Saturn was more like that. Uh, Saturn has large facilities on it too, but those are other agendas for other people. Okay, yeah. some of which we have, okay because we have mining companies. Let's take North American Aviation. Sure. Uh, Los Angeles Airport, that's where North American Aviation is, okay? Uh -huh. And you've seen on my block diagrams that are in my book what systems engineering really is, what controls the secret think tanks. Okay, uh, instead of a book or a document to do this, I came up with block diagrams. We have to have, to have one of those, we're going to need one of these, and we're going to need this for just the start of the program. As we get into this, we're going to change the phases of it into four different phases concept phase, definition phase, acquisition phase, and operational phase. So now that's a eight, 10 foot long piece of paper that's a foot high and it has every single block diagrams that are required to initiate that space program, okay? Every single one is in there. So those documents then are used in, in different manners to develop ICBMs. So I came up with a concept for really space concept. The military then used those for development of ICBMs and other weapon systems. But, and that, the initiation of that is to understand the, our position on our association with extraterrestrials. That's what the block diagram is for all these events that have to take place to interface with extraterrestrials. What do you mean? Okay, that's very complex what you just said. It is very complicated. So you're talking about yourself having a diagram, having been the person who cr creates a diagram that the entire sort of maybe all the militaries are going to follow that's going to diagram out our relationships with these with with the rest of the yeah ET we've races. used what turned out later to be a standard requirement this block diagram thing for every weapon system that any of the military has whether it's air force navy marines doesn't make any difference your company designing whatever go back to the pentagon and you propose a, a weapon system you're going to have to be, if you get that proposal, you're going to have to be controlled by this 375 document, which uh, I came up with for the Apollo program, and I submitted that to Von Braun, and that was one of the four programs of changing the entire NASA program, okay? So the first use of this was for ICBMs, I took that system and, and defined the entire Apollo program and the missions because we had, they had several missions. My group in the secret think tank came up with 44 separate missions extended to, to the year 2000, 1999. So the Apollo program was supposed to not just go to the moon, pick up the rocks, take the photographs, and come back. <laughs> yeah, the sure. Apollo program was to take us out into our solar system, build naval stations on every habitable uh, planet or its moon, 
okay? Right. And then the next phase was to go to the 12 closest stars, Alpha Centauri, Alpha Centauri being the first, put naval stations, bases on all of its planets, except we stopped that one because it had two suns and the radiation factor was not, we couldn't do it. But 11 other stars, the 11 closest stars to you, okay? And you're saying it's been done? And I'm saying that's what we plan on doing. Okay, you planned starting with Apollo and you planned That is the Apollo mission. No, that you. is the Apollo oh, mission. Oh, that's just Apollo. Okay. Did it happen? Uh, no. It got stopped, right? Yeah. And it got stopped by the reptilians. Yeah, they said no, no. Okay, now this diagram that you're saying, this, this block diagram that mm -hmm. is the militaries are all following. It basically is, in a sense, your de you kind of your design initially. It came through you, but it must have been downloaded to you somehow through the from the Nordics, okay. saying what Earth people were going to be allowed to do. Is yeah. that what it's saying? Okay. What kind of weapons they could or couldn't build? It's it was not for weapons. It was for us, and actually that's in my book. Right. Um, uh, it was for us to go out into the galaxy. Everything that's necessary to build a, uh, a transport or a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Go out in the galaxy, have communications with other extraterrestrials out there, and set up businesses with them. Right. Maybe we could mine stuff for them. Maybe we had certain materials they don't have. We could market these. Okay. Um, they may have things that we want to buy. Set up communications with other civilization people out in the galaxy. That's what the first block diagram was for, and that's what the mission was to have originally been, what we recommended, okay? Yeah. Now, yes, uh, Nordics, put that stuff in Billy Tompkins' mind, and he runs with this ball, okay? But you've got it in the book. I mean, that's what our thrust was. It was not military. Then the military picks up this document, and they run with that of every military program anybody wants. Okay, but when you say the military picked it up, I mean, here you are kind of almost embedded in the military. They, and, you, and you're dealing with von Braun and Debus. Now, they're Germans, Yeah. okay? So there is some kind of uh, interaction going on between still Germany, the U.S., and then Project Paperkit. Yeah, bringing right. over all the Nazi scientists. Yes. And at some point, we're being infiltrated. It's clear in your book that you, and especially your close friend that you worked with a lot, you used to talk in the dialogue of the book you're always saying someone is interfering, someone is on a higher level trying to manage this situation. Implement. Here. Implement the situation. Okay. So you're having both white hat guys yeah. out there, okay, and we got black hat guys out yes. there. And uh, they're both influencing us. And they still are. They have their agendas. And they still are, yes? Yes. Yeah. To, as we're talking, they're still doing this. Yes. Okay? It, it hasn't stopped. 